Greetings, and welcome to this brief tutorial on using process maps to establish or improve a rapid start antiretroviral therapy program for persons with HIV. This tutorial is brought to you by the University of California, San Francisco Rapid Start Initiative through funding from the Health Resources and Services Administration, HIV AIDS Bureau, Ryan White HIV AIDS Program, Special Projects of National Significance. Whenever a team is thinking about making a change inside their organization or their agency, they traditionally go through some familiar steps, beginning with determining an area of focus for their project, all the way through testing and retesting an idea before adoption and spread. For today's tutorial, we'd like to take a deeper look at the second step in our list of change processes, examine current process and performance. On the slide before you, looking at the top left and moving right, you can see that we have a process for making breakfast. It begins with inputs, which are our ingredients, things such as eggs, milk, bread, and butter, with a primary step following being to make the breakfast, with our outputs following of scrambled eggs, toast, crisp bacon, and pan-fried potatoes. As a person who grew up in Appalachia and now live in New Jersey, I live at the intersection of biscuits and diners. So someone just saying that they're going to make breakfast doesn't provide enough detail for someone like me who may be more interested in things like what ingredients you're using, how you're going to cook those ingredients, and what those ingredients will be served with. As you can see in the graphic on the slide, making breakfast has now been broken down into three more specific steps. We can break those steps down further by looking at the middle step, cooking ingredients, and identify what steps support that process. With more detail, we can see that that involves cooking bacon, cooking eggs, toasting bread, and frying potatoes. For additional detail, you can see we pull down the map one level further to heating the pan, pouring the mixture, stirring the mixture, adding pepper, and finally removing our eggs, indicating the process that we were using to cook the eggs. What we just looked at was a process map. A process map is a planning and management tool that describes the flow of work. Process maps are a visual way to think about the steps in a process. You may have also heard these referred to as workflows or flow charts. And you can see to the graphic on the right, an example of a process map, where there is a starting point, steps in a process, decisions in a process, and the end of the process. So why do teams use process maps? Process maps are really good at helping to get different perspectives. Teams can brainstorm all the steps in a process as it currently exists to get a shared understanding of what's happening inside the organization or the agency. This shared understanding of the current process helps teams to identify problems or bottlenecks, such as breakdowns in communication. It can help to focus discussions. It can also help to identify resources. Lastly, a process map can be a really great tool to help teams develop ideas about how to improve their process. Process maps use common symbols as a way to indicate a specific action or task or when a decision is being made. Contained on this slide are common process map symbols. Moving from the left to the right, you can see we begin with a start and stop symbol used to indicate the start and stop of your process. A square, rectangle, or box is used to indicate an activity or task. Diamonds indicate a decision point, often a yes or no. And you can see that we have a symbol for wait time, which is used to indicate a delay in a process. And lastly, process maps will contain flow lines, which is used to indicate where the reader should move next in the process. For example, when thinking about a rapid start program, a sample process map like our let's make breakfast might look like this, a starting point of a positive HIV test, moving to initiate ART, to link to primary care, and lastly, monitoring of the patient to rapid case closure. So how does a team create a process map? To create a process map, you want to begin by first convening the participants who are part of the process. You want to start by defining the first and last step in the process to make sure that your team is focused on the task at hand. 
You want to brainstorm with the participants all the steps in the process that are contained between your start and stop points. To facilitate this, you can use sticky notes to represent the individual steps. <clears throat> One sticky note per step, however, is recommended so that later you're able to move your process steps around to indicate changes you might want to make. <clears throat> Another recommendation is do not try to be linear in the brainstorm. Focus first on getting all of the steps out on the table and then begin putting them into a linear process. Also, when making a process map, it's very good to begin with your as is process, describing how things currently exist in the organization or the agency. Beginning with an idealized state may lead you to think that there are steps in your process uh, that could be holding you back or not contributing to positive outcomes that might be missed. <clears throat> so you always want to begin with how your process exists as is. Once your brainstorm is complete, then you want to take your sticky notes and put them in the order as they happen in the current process. Once your sticky notes are aligned, you can then transfer your sticky notes to a document using the symbols to describe the process. On this slide, you'll see some examples of some brainstorming for process maps. As you can see, there are not a lot of arrows on these maps. Primarily what you see are ideas, sticky notes, steps in the process, questions people have about the process. After creating this brainstorm step is when a team would then begin to move these individual stickies into a linear process describing their as is state. Lastly, some tips for process mapping. First, you want to ensure that the right people are in the room for brainstorming. Think about the various roles and disciplines that touch the process and ensure representativeness. Focus on the steps in the process, not the people performing the task. Make sure to review the process with additional stakeholders for a more comprehensive map. Disagreement about the steps can actually indicate a lack of standardization or a lack of knowledge about a specific process. Clients or patients can also provide valuable insight to a process, especially as it relates to potential delays. A team should be prepared to revise their process map several times before it represents the actual process map. As we described on the previous process, to minimize time spent on formatting, just ensure that the sticky notes represent all of your steps before thinking about inserting symbols or formatting. Once finalized, the process map can become part of the policy and procedure as a way of institutionalizing the process. Thank you for joining us today for this brief tutorial, and we look forward to helping support your development of Rapid Start programs in the future.